Hey guys, before I start this video, I want to give a great shout out to Luke Ness Monster. I woke up this morning and I watched his video on the availability of these figures and it pretty much tipped me off. And later on during work, I just went over to my store and I got them. So thank you so much, Luke Ness. It's not possible without you. And I'm sure most of my subs are already in tune with his content, but please support him if for some reason you haven't yet. So I have here four figures from the Andor series. Cassian Andor, Aldani Mission, Imperial Officer, Dark Times, Shore Trooper, and Imperial Officer, Ferrix. Of course, the show has not debuted yet, so I have no context of what these characters really are for sure. So I'll just look at these figures very objectively as just action figures. Let's start with the packaging first. Unsurprisingly, the Galaxy packaging is accented with a new color designated for Andor TV series, which is a bright, slightly orange-red color. All these figures are simple figures, and all only comes with one gun for accessories. Many are heavy reuse too, and I intend on breaking it down the best I can for you guys. So, side of the packaging. I'm glad these are released in such a way I could immediately complete this part of the mural. In the back, all the blurbs are the same between the four figures and are super general. I guess it doesn't want to give away too much spoilers for the show, I guess. So what it says is, <clears throat> In an era filled with danger, deception, and intrigue, Cassian Andor embarks on a path that will turn him into the rebel hero who will challenge the evil galactic empire. Okay, happy, good. All right, let's open the figures. I'll start with the simple one with the most reused, the Shore Trooper. It is essentially the same figure as the common grunt referred to as the Scarf Stormtrooper released for Rogue One. I don't have the squad leader with a comma. The only new sculpt here is a new belt that has a different ammo pouch sculpted into the soft plastic piece and a holster to hold the new pistol. I've never seen this pistol before, but I looked it up online and it's called the E-11 Blaster Pistol. Same designation as the Stormtrooper rifle, I guess. Perhaps this is an officer or something of that sort because most higher rank Imperials carry a small dinky little gun because they have other grunts to do the dirty work for them. I don't know, but it kind of looks like a compact submachine gun, like an Uzi. The colors have slight variation in the form of a tan undertonic instead of black. The colors are slightly more saturated overall and the brown is more chocolatey while previously it's more like burnt umber. It still has some weathering to highlight some details, but despite these variations, they don't look out of place when displayed next to each other. So it's fine for you to get it and put it next to other shore troopers and they just look like part of the army. One gripe I have is this. Like most recent repaints, Hasbro is skimping on painting the back of the figure. I don't know why they do that. It just maybe it's, yeah, I don't know. Articulation is no different from before, but I'll just list it out here just for hell of it. Head, it has decent movement, but it doesn't do anything spectacular. The shoulders can fly decently if you manage to tuck the shoulder armor under the torso armor. Being an older mold, it does not employ a butterfly joint on the shoulders. The elbows can only do a 90 degree bend, but it does have pinless elbows and swivel happens here instead of in the bicep as with even older figures. The hand and wrist are very standard. The right hand is a trigger finger and it twists 360 degrees and can swivel side to side. The left hand is more fist-like and can bend a little bit to hold a rifle with the wrist swivel up and down. In fact, these hand features are the same for all figures. So for these other figures, I won't address these at all. The mid torso has a slight tummy tuck and can rotate side to side, but not 360 degrees. The leg to hip joint is not great. It cannot do a split. It's just slightly swings to the side and 
and cannot bend up too much so the kneeling pose would be a challenge. Immediately below this joint is a rotation axis on the upper thigh. The knees are on a pin joint and can only bend 90 degrees. And the ankle joints are pretty standard with rocker angles. It cannot tilt too much upwards, but down covers pretty good range. So next I'll go on to the Imperial Officer, Ferrix. I originally thought Ferrix is the name of a character, but I looked it up online and it turns out to be a planet. So I assume it's just a generic officer in that place. The figure is a complete reuse also, but it has more in common with a Mud Trooper from Solo than Mix Mayfield from Mandalorian. It is on the exact same body, with same helmet, goggles, everything. The only difference here from the Mud Trooper is what it doesn't include. It doesn't have the breathing apparatus, cape, and it has a different rifle, which is a Stormtrooper rifle and has a different human head sculpt. And of course, it's molded in all black plastic, like everything is black. It also doesn't have any weathering present. It's just plastic. Fortunately though, there are slight differentiations between the shiny and matte parts to represent different materials and it looks very attractive um, in hand. But it is really a shame because the Mud Trooper is one of my favorite trooper designs and it would have been really cool to have an all black version of the Mud Trooper, like stealth Mud Trooper, like I don't know, like black mud, if it just have come with the cape or the mouthpiece. Oh well, like maybe I'll just customize it or something. Accessories, it comes with a Stormtrooper's E11 rifle. Articulation, I will not labor over it at all. Its range is nothing different from the Shore Trooper, with the exceptions, the knees here can really take advantage of the double pin joints and go way past 90 degrees. I just hope this figure doesn't work on the legs the same way the Mud Troopers do. Then there's Imperial Officer Dark Times. This is one interesting one. It has lots of reuse, but also managed to look very different and very sharp. The hook to this figure is the newly sculpted soft plastic cape. It does hinder the articulation a lot, but as a traffic cone, it, it, the details on this cape is phenomenal. It has this strange sheen to it, and it really conveys an almost leather quality to it. The way it flows is just beautiful. I love it so much that I actually forgive how crap it is for articulation. It also has a new torso. I cannot find any other figures that has this shape. It is most likely done in conjunction to the cape since the rank insignia is now on the cape instead of on the tunic itself. The hat cannot be removed, but I'm okay with it. The head sculpt likeness is not confirmed, but most likely to be one of the characters on the show. Other than that, many 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 UV uses. The legs are recycled from the Imperial Officers, which is not a surprise. It is also the same leg as the, the one they use for Krennic here. These arms and the one on Krennic don't match, but looking at the Imperial Officers photos from the other ones like Tarkin, it looks to match those figures instead. The hands are a match of Krennic and most likely the same as other Imperial Officers. And remember what I said earlier about the hands being that all the figures share the same hands and the same articulation for the hands. I take that back because in this case with this officer, the left hand actually is also a trigger finger. So you have double trigger finger, so you could theoretically double pistol. However, uh, it doesn't come with two pistols, so it's kind of a waste to be on this figure. I would have preferred it on Captain Rex, but whatever, it's there and it is similar to how it is like on the Krennic action figures. It comes with the pistol, which is, from my understanding, is the SE-14R, which looks the same as the Death Trooper sidearm. Unfortunately, it has no weapon storage. Articulation, as you could probably guess, is very limited. The head rotates well, has tilt, but not a lot of range up and down. Arms can fly at shoulder, but I don't know the true range because it pretty much got stunted by the cape. Elbows can't bend past 90 degrees, and the swivel occurs at the elbow via the hidden joints. 
legs again the hip to leg joint is inhibited by the clothing there is a rotation at the upper thigh covered by the clothing knees can bend 90 degrees and that's it ankles have up and decent down as usual last but not least there's cassian andor aldani mission i don't know what or where aldani is wikipedia just said is a place so i take it they know just as little as i do so there's a head sculpt of Diego Luna wearing a hat, which like the other figure, the hat doesn't come off, but the likeness, I don't know. I don't, I don't look at him much. I guess it's a good scan, but if, if no one tells me who it is and it just shows me his figure, I will not say, wow, oh my God, this is Diego Luna. But fortunately it's well painted. So as, a grunt it looks like a good figure the overall color scheme is quite nice it's a mix of olive drab and really nice black parts that are nice and matte and grounds the color scheme the boots have discoloration towards the bottom suggesting he has been treading through mud just like the imperial officer dark times it's only accessories is the se-14r death trooper pistol as for reuse, everything below the neck and above the belt is completely the same as the Mud Trooper. The tonic below the belt, however, I cannot place it. Perhaps it's a new sculpt. And this goes for the leg also. I won't be surprised if it is a reuse, but I cannot place it right now. If you guys know what it is, let me know. If it is a reuse, I'm sure it's a recent figure because there are no pin joints. As for articulation, see what I said for the Shore Trooper. Not the same figure, but similar range. Only difference here is at the knees, it has an extra swivel. And because it is a single hidden joint, it doesn't go past 90 degrees. So there you have it. Do you like these figures? Well, I generally prefer faceless troopers, but now I want to expand the Imperial Army to include officers, so it is a good place to start. It has a good variation in color and detail. I'm glad the Star Wars franchise is expanding on the repertoire of designs. I don't see them as Andor characters as much as more variants for the Imperial Army. I also think they're well made, and albeit some laziness to the paint, but I'm sure some that are bugged buy it will take a paintbrush to them but otherwise i'm glad i've gotten these and please let me know what you think in the comments so otherwise take care and i'll see you in the next video